Welcome to this week's episode of One Minding, where we will explore how to unstuck yourself. Do you feel stuck in life, but uncertain if it's due to external circumstances or internal factors? Well, this is the first question we will help you answer. We all have thoughts, feelings, emotions, habits and behaviours we want to be free from that can make us feel stuck or hinder our progress. However, what if being stuck is just a momentary belief in who you are not? Join us as we delve into how to identify and address the root cause of these conflicts and discover the truth of who you really are. Sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Good afternoon or good evening or good morning, wherever you may be. Hi, Gems. Hi there. How is everyone? Lovely to see you. Hello, Mr. P. Hi, Chris. Hi, everyone. Gem, are you there? Can you hear me now? Oh, yes, thank God. Yeah, I can hear that you. That was so strange. Oh, well, we're back. Yeah, we're back. stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, hi, Citizen Kane, Mr. P. Vinny. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you here. Julie. Yeah. I can't see some of your names, so it's really wonderful that you'll show up. Yeah, no, it's nice to see all the cult fam. You guys show up every week. Thank you all so much. And me and Moles were speaking earlier and, you know, this podcast goes out and we have thousands of listeners or thousands of listens from all over the world in different countries. And you guys are the real bread and butter of the podcast. You know, this is why we actually started it, because people were struggling in lockdown and we made it for our friends and then we realized actually this should go out there to the world so any questions you guys have throughout please please ask us because you just don't know who it's going to help on the other side there's going to be someone listening who wants the answer to a question that you've got so you know some of you don't want to share your voices that's absolutely fine you can always message me but please don't be shy because you just don't know who it's going to affect and we're so grateful for that this is why we do it yeah and we can answer like questions on pretty much anything if it's around a problem that you're facing or you know something it looks like you're up against so yeah we really um enjoy getting the questions so we just want to encourage that a little bit more and as Jem said you're all with us from the beginning most of you we've been going for like probably a year and a half nearly and yeah, it's got a huge reach and you may think your question is silly or irrelevant and they never are. No, they're really not. It's really important to spread the word. We've got some really good subjects and questions already tonight. But yeah, just really glad that you're part of it and glad to be back. Um, I was laughing earlier. I need to apologise. I shouldn't laugh because it's not actually that funny, but I've been a bit stuck myself over the last week, which is why... There has not been any podcast releases because I do the editing and, oh my God, feeling like being stuck, hearing my voice and trying to figure out if it sounds good or not. I just got myself in a right mess. So whenever this podcast comes out, apologies for there being such a delay and the next episode will be out very soon. Sometimes you just get stuck. That's what happened, um, which is why. There hasn't been one out for a while, but there will be one out very, very soon. And yeah, just thank you guys for all of your support. But yeah, we'll probably go into that later. But editing the podcast is something that I've been doing for the last 12 months and I love doing it. I really enjoy it and I learn things. I really hear things. But for whatever reason, I couldn't hear anything good and I couldn't make it work. I couldn't make it sound right. And then as soon as I sent it to Moles, she's like, there's nothing wrong with it. And I re-listened and I can't find anything wrong with it now. And it's just like, <laughs> what the fuck? That's what I love about what we teach. It's this thing that looks like a problem on one day can just look like absolutely nothing on the next. It's always us. And we forget that it's us. So there's only ever one thing in the room. And it's us. And it's that reminder. And again, that's why we love you coming back every week. We know the power of listening in every week, having this conversation on a weekly basis is the reminder of who we are. It's the reminder that there's something more to our experience than this material world and our minds that we get so caught up in. And it allows us to check out, it allows us to find something deeper and it allows us to find a bit of freedom from what can seem sometimes like, you know, a real contraction in life. We do face things, we do get caught up and we forget 
you know, it's so easy to forget because what we talk about is invisible and the world is incredibly visible, you know, it's tangible. We can touch it, taste it, feel it and see it. And it's very compelling. Our problems can be incredibly compelling. And then there's this invisible truth that when we're pointed back to it can just wake us up, can just allow us to see that, oh, actually, okay, there's a space within me that I'm okay. And to know that, to explore that, to uncover that week by week, we know the benefits because how much has benefited us. We do get caught up still, as Jem says, but we come out of it and we've moved away from the thinking there's something wrong with us and we need fixing model as well, which is something that we really value and is very important. So tonight we're going to talk about getting unstuck. I think being stuck is something we can all relate to. There's always times in our lives where we feel stuck and it's looking a bit more deeply into that, what that means, what that looks like and how we can see it a little bit differently. So Gem, is there anything that you'd like to cover before I go on? Just to say thank you to all the listeners and thank you for being here. Thank you to our sponsors who are Vemp. You can check them out at vemp.xyz. Just looking forward to getting into it tonight, I think. There'll be lots of insights and revelations. So yeah, as always, just message me any questions and we'll go through them shortly. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And please share it. And yeah, let's get this message out there. So I think I'd like to first start with asking you a question. What does it look like to you when you are stuck? Because it's going to look different to all of us. So I just want you to kind of sit with that. Where? Where do you find that you get the most stuck in your life? Is it money, relationships, work, something else? Like, where's your sticky area? Because we all have some. And it's, it's really interesting to begin to explore what that looks like for you because that will look like it's really personal and we're going to kind of uncover why maybe that isn't true. And then as you explore that, I want to ask you, is that being stuck? external or internal what does it look like does it look like it's outside of you or does it look like it's something within you again going to be different for everybody could look like both okay so these questions are really the foundations of exploring within you the areas that look really tough look really sticky but when you see through them can really have a real evolutionary effect they can really begin to help see your experience differently. So it's not about fixing. What we're teaching is never about fixing. It's always an exploration. It's always about uncovering something deep. And with this experience of being stuck, what you'll begin to notice is that you have some internal conflict with it. You know, you'll we want to be free of something within that stuckness. It might be that you want to move forward in life. It might be that you want to be free of certain thinking. It might be that you want to be free of certain feelings or emotions or habits or behaviors. And what happens is this conflict is where the peace can't be revealed. It's not in the actual situation that it appears as. It's actually in the conflict of your resistance. It's almost like we don't want to own who we really are. And I'm not talking about who we really are in the sense of the oneness. I'm talking about who we are as the human. All the inconsistencies, all the ways that we tell ourselves we're not so great, all the ways in which we come up against ourselves. We're so hard on ourselves, you know, and there's something in that that we can see something more deeply about who we are. Because actually what we try and run away from if we just sit with it, we can see it's not really true. It's like as if we sit there and we think, I'm stuck because of A, B or C and my life is going to be better once I get over that. But the better is who we are underneath that. And it's like this running away to something better when we could just sit and observe and experience it and see through it and then life's just there. Life's here in front of us in every moment. Life's happening constantly. And how much of life are we missing by being in this illusion of being stuck? Now, obviously, there are always times in life where we may, you know, lose a job. We may not have any money. A relationship can break down. We feel like we're waiting for something. 
of course it's true in the physical world that there's times where there's the appearance of stuckness but what there is is just a period where things are maybe not moving as quickly as we want them to we can be very very impatient it's where are we being impatient where are we trying to move things forward and feeling stuck when life is just happening exactly as it is and it's happening perfectly so it's like what are we trying to resist what are we up against is it the world back to the original question is it external or is it internal because if the external world looks exactly as it is and that is perfect and then we're fighting against it we're kind of going in the wrong direction because it's actually in the acceptance that we begin to move. It sounds so paradoxical, but it's so true. We can get so stuck in our heads that we freeze in the world. And what I'm talking about, yeah, the world can sometimes appear that it's not moving quickly enough for us. But if we can come out of our heads about that, we begin to see that, oh, actually we are in flow. It's just that I'm resisting what flow is. I'm saying that flow should be that my life is constantly moving in the direction and the way that I have made up that it should, rather than seeing that it's going exactly as it should. So we start to come behind thoughts. We start to come behind our beliefs and challenge them and see that there's nothing really to get unstuck from but our own thinking. Okay, so... This is where we start to see maybe the problem isn't an external one. Maybe it's an internal one. Maybe it's my vision. Maybe it's what I'm looking at rather than what is actually apparent and appearing. Because what is apparent and appearing is always there. You know, it's my version of that is going to say whether I feel stuck or whether I feel like I'm in movement. And periods of quiet periods of when life does slow down where things may not work out as we expected or wanted them to are actually incredibly valuable so if we change our perception of that we can have a different experience of it i personally don't believe that we can be out of flow i think we just observe life and resist it and say that we're not in flow it doesn't make any sense to me anymore for life not to be flowing it always is it's just that sometimes I don't want it to look like that and I say well this isn't flowing it's because in my interpretation it's not going my way maybe I want to feel a certain way Maybe I want something in the future to look a certain way. It's always conflict. It's always coming up against reality and trying to have an argument with it. And if we begin to see that we're always in flow and we get times in life where it's going really well in our experience and then times we say it's not going really well, that's just life, life thing. Like we're all up against that all the time. We're always going to have life not work out the way we expect or want it to. And a really great thing that I heard once from a teacher was, it feels like, Moles, that when you're quiet, you want to be busy and you're worried about why you're not busy. And when you're busy, you want to be quiet and you want to have some space. So why not just enjoy being quiet when you're quiet and enjoy being busy when you're busy? And try not to get too caught up about any opposite states or how you think it should look. I was like, God, yeah. I mean, this is quite early on in my understanding of the three principles. And it's just these little things that hit you and you're going, God, yeah, I really do do that. And what opportunities am I missing by doing that? I was always resisting the state I was in, thinking that there was a better state to be rather than just being just being here now and saying well okay the more I'm seeing that I'm in flow the more if I feel like actually it's not going quite the way that I think it should I can then be open to new ideas coming through seeing things differently and taking action on that rather than being in my head saying I'm stuck I'm stuck I'm stuck things aren't working out things aren't working out things aren't working out because 
what are you saying isn't working out? What is stuck? Let's just look at that. What does stuck mean? It doesn't really make sense when you truly explore it. It's just usually a quietness. It's usually that we want to feel a certain way. We want to forget the past. We want to have a different future. We don't want to think the thoughts that we think. We don't want to have an addiction. We want to be free from fear. We want to have something more. And it's not happening. And it's like we're making all that up. So this wanting is a movement away from life exactly as it is. So can you see how that is actually the self-denial? We don't want it. And it's not there. But we're creating it by trying to remove it. It's like our minds are so clever. They trick us in so many ways. And actually, this all comes from inside. I guess if we looked at it deeply enough, it would come from an insecurity. It would come from the separate self that never feels like it's quite got enough or it's quite good enough. Because that insecurity is the driver of, you know, it isn't okay. If we're completely feeling secure and content within, then that's reflected in the world. I've seen people with everything materially that you could possibly want that are so dissatisfied and people with nothing that are completely content. So it's not in the world, it's in us. And that's what we have to wake up. That's what we have to see. That's what we have to be reminded of. I still need reminding of it. But, oh, it's not working out. I'm stuck. This isn't flowing. And then I have to just remember. I have to get quiet. I have to ask myself the questions. What's really going on here? Is this really true? You know, I love that question. I must say it on every episode. Is this really true? Could I be making this up again? Absolutely. It's always us. In last week, we talked about oneness. We are one. There isn't a separation and life isn't separate from us. It's just this one experience, this one energy creating all things. We are it. So if we go to that level where we went really deep last week in the conversation, stuck is us resisting that. If we begin to explore the oneness, and if you haven't listened to last week, please do. I think it was a great episode. These things begin to look different. These problems disappear. They dissolve. They dissolve into that oneness. We come back into our being. That's what being is. It's just seeing who we are before thought. It's just knowing that we're something more. We have these minds that think that peace and love and happiness are going to come from a certain set of circumstances that we can manipulate in the world and then we're going to be okay. But actually all those things come from being free of our concept of ourself. You know, it's not our troubles and our worries that need to go for us to have peace. It's us to see through our troubles and our worries to have peace. It's the absence of self. It's not more selfing. We get so much into more selfing, more material, more me. Another great teacher said, I think it was Dr. Bill Pettit, he's a psychologist that teaches the three principles, and he said, the more of me on my mind, there my troubles begin. Yeah, the more of me on my mind, there my troubles begin. It gets so caught up in this idea of who we are. We miss so much by being so caught up in ourselves. And what you'll notice, hopefully, on these live calls or listening to the podcast, is that during these conversations, you get a little bit quieter than you may normally be. You find that the mind does slow down. You do access something deeper. Maybe akin to the state of meditation, but without having to meditate, just by listening just by the mind slowing down. And the mind hasn't slowed down because 
you have done something because of a technique, because of an affirmation, because of a meditation, the mind has slowed down because we're pointing it home. We're pointing to something deeper. That's this. It's an uncovering. The conceptual mind, the mind that's constantly going and will never stop, just begins to unwind a little bit for something more beautiful to be accessed, for us to have a richer experience in that moment, for us to come into the moment, for us to see a little bit more deeply who we are. And it's this conversation because we're challenging thought, but we're also showing you that thought is the bridge to your home within. Thought isn't your enemy. Thought is the very thing that points us home. It shows us that, wow, thought comes, thought goes. It's transient, it's illusory, it's always there. But it's the space that it came from is where it rises from that we touch that space, there's something deeper there. And then we go, oh, I'm not that thought. If I'm not my thinking, who am I? We don't need to know the answer to that question. The richness is in the exploration. It's all there. And there's nothing to get. It's just revealed. Can't grab it. Can't buy it. It's here within us. There's a lovely Robert Spira quote. He's a lovely English non-dual teacher. I've, I've listened to him speak before in London and he's got such a beautiful understanding. And he says, ultimately, there are no problems. There are just situations. However, until this is clear, apparently problematic situations will continue to occur in our life, provoking and testing us until we have understood their message, namely, that we should withdraw from people and circumstances the expectation or demand that they be the source of our happiness. How wonderful is that? That we should withdraw from people and circumstances the expectation or demand that they be the source of our happiness. Look where we do that. Look at our expectations of people in the world to create our feeling. Not only should we withdraw it, because it's obviously a, a much richer experience for us when we do, because we reveal who we are and the depth of our being, but also they can't contain it. So it's like a fool's errand to even think that they can. It's such a misunderstanding. So... You can begin to see that this mind, this ego that's keeping us stuck or the illusion of stuck by telling us that we're stuck because it's thought, it's thought coming in and saying, well, you're stuck, you know, you're unhappy. But it can also be a bit tricky and stop us from doing the work to go beyond it, to explore what we're doing here. So be aware of that as well and catch yourself if you but, oh, I don't need to listen to that anymore. I don't need to look in this direction. You know, if it's not us, whatever it may be, that is your exploration within an understanding like the three principles or something similar, your mind will come up against resistance to it. So just remember that. And often when we're stuck is what we come up against the most resistance. And if we could just have a, an understanding that's deep enough that we go, hold on a minute. You know, I know which direction I've got to look in. I know I don't need to micromanage the world. I know that I need to come back inside and find out who I am because that's going to be much more beneficial to my experience. That's going to create the change that I'm looking for. So I'm not sitting here and saying, well, you know, you shouldn't want change. Of course, we all want things to change and new experiences and to do things in the world, that's absolutely fine. But it's different from doing it from a place of lack and feeling stuck than, wow, this seems fun. I'm going to go and explore these things. So you can see the difference. It's like, how are we showing up? I got a message the other morning 
And I woke up and I was just a bit like, blah. And it was everything that you think today that you're not feeling enthusiastic about, turn it into something that you do feel enthusiastic about. And I was just like, oh my God, I've woken up and for the last half hour, I haven't felt that about anything. And it was just like a flick to switch. And it was like, oh my God, I'm so lucky. I'm going to do this today. I'm going to go and do that. And it was so interesting. It was just that reminder for me that how am I seeing it? How am I looking at the world? I woke up and I wasn't looking at the world really as like this amazing place. And I will do that again, I'm sure. But it was really wonderful to just suddenly have that reminder where I did again. Suddenly I was like, oh, of course. It's always thought. It's always me. How do I want to experience this day? Now, sometimes I can be a right moody bitch. Don't get me wrong. I also have this wonderful understanding that will take me out of that will get me to wake up and go well, what am I doing why am I looking at it like that everything's a miracle when you look at it from deep within everything's a problem when you get really stuck in your head again where do we get stuck it's not the world it's in our heads it's believing thought that isn't true thought is the only player in feeling stuck Think about things that sometimes you have to do that you're putting off or something that you're scared of doing and how we can blow it up in our minds only to face and actually have the reality of it and it not be anywhere near as bad as we thought. The power of thought. It's such an interesting area to explore because we all experience it. It's the human condition. We're going to come up against all of it. All of the ways that we feel wonderful, all the ways that we make ourselves feel bad, all of the ways that we feel stuck, all the ways that we feel elated. I mean, life is everything. But having this guidance system within us and understanding that, exploring that, knowing that even if I'm not feeling it, then it's going to come in at some point is so helpful. It's an amazing thing to have. So, yeah, I'm going to see what Jim has to say. Oh, well, as you were speaking, there were a few of those, you know, the Gordon Ramsay meme where he goes, oh, F <laughs> off, and he's laughing. That was the picture that kept coming through. And also, we might have to put a disclaimer on the beginning of your bit then, as you were speaking, like getting into a meditative state, something like, please do not listen to this while driving, <laughs> operating heavy machinery. We haven't thought about that. Wow. I mean, yeah, I'm coming from the point of view that I've just unstuck myself or become unstuck or whatever in the last couple of days. But what the question that is coming up for me is why do we get stuck initially? What is it that gets us stuck? It's just unhelpful thinking. Like we can pin it on so many, the mind would want to pin it on so many things. But when we just see it's unhelpful thought and thought that isn't true, it can't be anything other than that. And often it can be habitual thought. As I said at the beginning, it, there's areas where it doesn't look like thought is where we're going to get stuck. Yeah, it's always thought, but it won't look like thought. They'll be, yeah, no, I get that, but that can't be thought, Moles, because, you know, that's really happening. And, and well, your experience of it is still coming from you, so it's still thought. And there's moments yeah. of revelation where we see it's thought. And this still happens for me. There's areas where... I don't see it's thought, and then I do, and I'm like, holy shit, God, how did I not see that? And I guess if we are confirming that we're stuck by me just saying, oh, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, it's literally sticking myself to the stuckness. <laughs> you are sticking yourself to the stuckness. I love that. <laughs> but we know that we don't want to be there when we're there, but we keep, well, me personally, I keep going over the same thing. Well, I'm stuck, I can't do it. Even... Going back to the podcast, how on earth can something sound so different within 24 hours? It's just, it's mind-blowing, but it's real. And that is just insane. Yeah, and also don't forget what we tend to do when we have this stuck, sticky thinking is we forget that the answers are already within us. It's all there. There's nothing that doesn't already exist. It's just we get 
locked in. So that remembering, again, it, back to the importance of the conversation, it's remembering it, it's reminding ourselves of it, it's knowing that this is true. We're not pointing to something that's woolly, we're pointing to something that's true and is incredibly practical to understand because when we get caught up and we have that moment of seeing it, we become clear, we come back into the moment, we see that Oh, that was us again. That was thought again. I don't need to believe that thinking. But we're only supposed to see it when it's supposed to be revealed. I, I feel like I'm sneakily asking this every single week. Oh, because it's not maybe, <laughs> maybe, just maybe, you're going to come up with the answer to say, yeah, this is how you do it really quickly. This is how you grab yourself and you can observe it quicker and pull yourself out of it. But there is no quick way, is there? Thinking still, and understand to be so, and you've been in it for around three years now, is you're still looking for a tool for your toolbox to get you out of the places that you don't like to be in. And I keep telling you, there was a tool to put in your toolbox for that. You would have found it because someone would have sold it and be a billionaire and living on some island somewhere because they'd found the secret for us not to have sticky thinking, for us not to get caught up. And there's a lot of things that say, do this and you won't get caught up anymore or you won't be unhappy anymore. And we've all tried them and they may have temporarily worked, but we all go back to some kind of low thinking because that's the nature of being human. So what we're definitely not selling eternal happiness, we're selling an internal understanding. We're showing you who you are. In the words of George Pransky, be grateful in your highs and graceful in your lows. And that's what we have here. And it's completely natural for the mind to yell and scream and say, I need a doing. I want to know how to do this. Do you tell me all these answers? I just want to know how to get out of it when I'm in it. And I keep telling you no. <laughs> and you will probably keep asking and that's okay. But it's just that you may get something by noticing that your mind still wants that. Well, I did, because the funny thing is, is that when I am in the zone, when I'm in flow, I know that I don't need a bloody tool. No. <laughs> There's nothing that's needed. Always. Funny. Yeah. Always. Wow. I want to go on to a question that we had from one of our listeners in Australia. And again, if anyone's got any questions, feel free to request or send me a message. But yeah, he listens in Australia and he has written to us and said, Hi, Miles, how are you? I've got a bit of a head F at the minute and I was after some advice if possible. I've been listening to the podcast and it's really starting to click with me. It's actually crazy how so many people put themselves through hell and it's just their own thoughts doing it. Now, my problem is that I live in Australia. I've been here for 11 years and I'm from the UK originally after traveling the world and then settling down wife, house and children. We tried to move back, but the pandemic halted it and then tried again last year, but my mother-in-law got sick. We've been planning again this year, but can't really justify spending 50,000 again to move all our stuff back and set up when it could be a deposit for another house when all this crap blows over. My wife doesn't want to leave at all and the kids are happy. So it feels like I'll just be dragging everybody over there when they're all happy here. It feels like I'm destined to stay here for now, but how can I say that's just thought? All my family are back in England and I can't just dismiss those feelings. I understand if you don't give advice for free, I'm just struggling with this one. And as I've been so set on moving back for the last three years and now it seems like I'm stuck. Yeah, bless him. I've come across this quite a few times working with private clients as well. It's quite common, you know, for initially people wanting to move to another country and, you know, they move away from their families, but there's always a point where they're like, oh, you know, they start to miss people and they want to go home, but they've set up a new life somewhere else. They do come through it and they do see it differently, but there'll be a lot for this person to see within this experience. It really is interesting and I never ever kind of have the question beforehand and know what I'm going to say, know what I'm going to answer. It's always organic, but it really fits with what we've been saying tonight about where it doesn't look like thought, it's going to look really sticky. Now, of course, his family are in another country. There's an acceptance of that. There was his choice to move there, but there's also probably a lot of happiness 
that he's missing in his experience by wanting to be in a different place. Because there is where he is and that's how it's meant to be. And I'm sure if he could connect more with the experience that he's having there rather than what he's missing, he will really begin to open up to being there. And you know what can often be true, and I'm sure he loves his family very much, clearly, it can be that, you know, you come home and you're faced with the same experience of dissatisfaction because maybe the dissatisfaction isn't coming from your experience. It's coming from us. So this inner exploration that he can go on, this uncovering the joy and happiness within him that's innate, really can begin to allow him to enjoy where he is. So again, it's what we said earlier about it's not in circumstances. You know, hopefully this episode when he listens to it will really help him because if my happiness and my well-being isn't in being at home or what he calls home in the UK, then where does it really come from? It has to be us. So if he wakes up where he is now, he can begin to notice what he's got, plan his future there. You know, he can feel like probably for him really stuck because he doesn't want to plan being there because he wants to be here, but actually he can't come here because his whole family are happy there. But if he explores the principles and that his happiness isn't dependent on a location and those people in his life, you know, he's still connected to his family it's just the physical bit's gone it was still especially in this day and age there'll still be many ways to connect with them and you know i know that that person can also come back for visits so he will still have those connections but dissatisfaction especially when you have a good life which i know he has isn't coming from not being in a location i, I, I really know that now, I've worked with people that have really believed that and they've really seen it, uncovered it. And then I know other people that I haven't worked with that have gone, I know I'm going to be happy when I moved from Essex to Cornwall and they get to Cornwall and then they're like, oh, I still don't feel very happy. And I'm like, yeah, no, because your happiness wasn't in a place. It was always within you. So all these things that we come up against that look like challenges or, or actually opportunities for us to go inside. And there isn't anything other than thought in the room ever yeah and seeing that can be really empowering because he'll get caught up in his thinking about his family and if he sees that okay well I do miss them but I'm here and they're there and actually if I come back into the moment I can go to the beach or I can do this or I can do that there's a whole experience waiting for him there but if you live in the world of thought that you're not happy unless you're somewhere else that's how the world's going to look because thought's creating the experience. And all that's going to do is keep lowering and lowering the state of mind. That's going to lead into an, an unhappiness. And it's challenging how we see the world. It's challenging how we see ourselves. It's seeing through the illusion that I'll be happy when. Now get happy there. Then see what happens. Also, nothing's set in stone. We never know. He could move in a year, he could move in five years. People change their minds as well. We don't know the future. So get comfortable with the present moment and then see what opens up from there. Because that's where everything is. Nothing else exists. All of us on this call, nothing else exists but being on this call right now. It's not a future or a past that actually exists. We can conceptualize them, but they're not really there. There's just this this moment and when we challenge thought when we see through our personal thinking we can open up to that and we can be like oh yeah okay what was I making up that wasn't true and that doesn't mean to say don't miss your family but missing your family doesn't mean to say that you need to uproot everything and change everything and disrupt everything to get somewhere and realize that oh maybe it wasn't there anyway wake up to the now wake up to what you have just begin to see with fresh eyes your experience and life will show up differently that was an amazing answer I, that will have given them a lot to well think or not think about we should get you a page in the local paper agony aunt dear moles <laughs> these work really well <laughs> and the only thing that i had that was a bit different when i read it was that it sounds like he wants to be in Australia, his children do, his wife does, he's happy there. 
but he's used to feeling like he should be moving back. And sometimes we have to reassess the situation. Maybe if he looked at it, he might not feel the guilt anymore for wanting to move back because, you know, why? Why? Sometimes you just have to really look at things with fresh eyes, don't you? Yeah, guilt isn't a helpful emotion and it's not true. Again, it's just there's us, there's life, there's this space between how we think it should look or how we should have shown up in some way or what we've done in some way. And then within that space, we create this emotion of guilt and say, it shouldn't have been like that or it shouldn't be like that or it's not going to be like that. And that space of guilt is just an illusion. There's nothing there. We've made it all up by there being like a juxtaposition between what is and what we think should be. Yeah, so again, it's all these things come up and when you challenge them, when you see them, you see how ridiculously unhelpful they are. Like guilt hat serves no purpose whatsoever. It's a beautiful way for the ego to torture us. And when we get into that position, it's like thought, judging thought. It's ridiculous when you think about it, but that's what's happening. Absolutely. Well, hopefully that will help him. And thank you for listening. It's quite crazy to think that actually... We've got people listening all over the world, which we do, but it's nice to hear from people. Yeah, if yeah. anyone got any questions or anything to say, please come up. It's always great to hear from you guys. We're all very quiet tonight. We've got a couple of other questions that I can bring up from other weeks, and it's, say, somebody who has built their identity around a mental illness, like a past diagnosis. So someone that has like been living, breathing through those symptoms because that's what they thought they had. And they want to move away and see things through fresh eyes. What advice would you give to somebody who is going through that? Well, it would be on a one-to-one -one basis. It'd probably be unique and explore through their experience how that looks. But what we're finding is that I think it's the DMB is the manual of mental illnesses. And I think it's just getting like more and more and more different labels and diagnoses added to it you know it's becoming huge and what i like to explore is that well they're all made up they're made up from people's thoughts and feelings and then someone in a white coat says well that means you're this or oh, that's a new label we're going to give people and people tend to especially if they're going through this time of mental illness they will go to see someone to help them and that person will be helping them in some way but they will give them this label they will give them this diagnosis and because the mind wants something to cling to a bit like you Jen with wanting a tool the mind wants something the mind will get that diagnosis and it will identify with that diagnosis and then it will almost we will live as if we are that diagnosis so rather than it's thoughts and feelings happening to us, clearly very uncomfortable and most likely temporary, not with everybody, but most likely temporary. It's such a tricky area. I have to be so careful what I say. It can become that the identification with the diagnosis can then become so strong that we don't know anything else. We live as that is our truth, okay? And what we've explored over many, 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 many weeks is that our labels aren't true and that what we think we are tends to be how we show up. So all of the things that we've thought about the self tend to be true. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I'm not saying people don't go through problems, obviously, and mental health issues are rife. And there's many, many diagnoses, but there's a freedom that can be found in the challenging of saying, well, that's what's happening to me. It's not who I am. If I get someone that's severely depressed, I will say, can we start undoing that to point to the fact that you have depressed thoughts? Stop identifying with it as if it is you. It's an experience you're having. It's not who you are. And I think that can be quite freeing. And I you know, in my work, I've seen amazing results. I personally have had amazing results from the work that I've done for myself within this, going from someone that was depressed and anxious to not being that anymore. So if you can see how the mind can contract and want a diagnosis and hold on to it because it gives us an answer for why we're feeling so bad and the mind wants the answer for why we're feeling so bad. But unfortunately, we turn that into something much bigger. 
if we can challenge the mind to not need the label, there's a certain amount of freedom that can be seen in that. Again, I've got to be a little bit careful. So have I explained that well, Gem? Yeah, I thought that was an excellent answer. And that when people are diagnosed with things, that's only a snapshot of how their symptoms are probably at their worst. And people can carry that on throughout their whole life where actually they may be showing up as completely well. We are in a mental health epidemic and people being labelled after half an hour appointments. There's a huge backlog in the UK, but people not even seeing clinicians and doing things over Zoom and it is quite wild. So having conversations like this, I think are so, so important. Yeah, I, I heard from someone over the last couple of days for a relative and they had definitely in a severe mental state and they've got to wait three months to be seen by someone publicly, like through the NHS, three months. You know, that's crazy. That shouldn't be how it is at all. And I know it's overrun. I know there's too many people wanting the services, but, you know, if someone's in crisis, the help should be there. The world is broken. The fact that it doesn't offer that help to the people that need it while siphoning off money to people that already have more than enough. But I'm not going to get on my soapbox here, but, you know, I think everybody can agree with me here that, there's definitely inequality that needs to be sorted out as quickly as possible. Yeah, I totally agree. But the world is changing and unminding is a big part of it. So people that are struggling, we will get the podcast to them somehow. There's lots to be said in this new movement. We can't rely on the old systems anymore. The same with money. This is a new world we're entering. And we've got a couple of requests. We've got Ant-C first, so I'll bring you up and then we've got Josh, who has been on the show a few times. Hi, so, see, hi, thank Josh. you. Hey, thanks for having me up. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Nice to see you. How are you? Good, good. How are you guys doing? Good, thank you, darling. Um, I love what you were just saying, and I want to almost like recap it just a little bit and make sure that you know we're on the same page because I feel like we are. Is that okay? Absolutely. No sure I so. I mean, I personally believe, and I think this is what you said, that the I that, that I identify as is no more than a collection of memories that I say is true, right? And so all these different memories that I have from my past, even in my gene pool, in my gene line that I don't even know were made when before I was born, I identify those memories as they come up and react to those memories as if they're happening. And then I identify that as me, but that's not actually what's happening, right? Like that's, that's not real what's happening right now. What's happening right now is an ever flowing dynamic, uh, life creation, maintenance, destruction process that I get to interact with and choose what I want to do with and how I want to be with in every moment, every day. And that makes me the creator of my own world and it frees me from the memories that I associated previously as me. Right. Absolutely. Spot on. I love it. Yeah. I love how you see it. Good. Yeah. So, um, I'm actually an Isha meditator. I follow Sadhguru and I meditate with the Isha foundation, you know, I do yoga three, four hours a day. I don't know, like, I missed the first part of this, unfortunately, but, like, I don't know what you guys were kind of promoting as a solution to people that aren't able to get those mental health services right away. Because I know, like, so many people get stuck in, I knew what you were saying about a diagnosis, right? It's like, oh, I've been diagnosed with this, so that means if I take this pill, it's going to make all this stuff go away. And unfortunately, that's not how it works. Like, it might make you happy for a little bit, but like you're still in that trap of memory that you haven't resolved that you don't even know why you're in it. Like you don't know if it was from your childhood that like you have this memory that's set. But like, again, I don't know what you guys, what else you guys propose as a solution. Um, well, besides... it's not so much. It's hard to explain. It's not really solution based. It's understanding based. It's not meditation. There's not an exercise to do. In fact, there's nothing to do in what I teach. It's called the three principles and it's a deep exploration of who we really are before who we think we are. And as we explore that by a thought and by challenging our thoughts, we see this depth of who we are and all these 
things that we think we are begin to fall away. So it's quite different from a person doing something. It's more about our beingness. And it's, it's, I'll send some stuff to you. I think you'll probably find it really interesting. And it's fine for someone to meditate, but I would never, I don't prescribe a thing. I describe a system to people. I have clients that meditate. I have clients that never meditate. I don't meditate myself. But, you know, because I'm never, ever going to tell anyone what to do, I'm going to say, this is who you are. Let's explore that. From there, your own wisdom, your own innate creative potential will come through and show you what's the best direction for you, what things that you want, what fill up your being. And that is so different for everybody that that's why I love this teaching because it doesn't say this is how you should do it. It's saying this is how it is. Go do what you want. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. I'd love to see it, right? Because ultimately we're, we are nothing, like no thing, right? We're no one thing, we're everything, right? Yeah, actually, if you listen to last week's, that's probably what I'll send you. That's our full exploration last week was, it was called the oneness of life. And we just look at that nothingness and that's it. That's the space. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're pointing to. That's what we touch. And that's where just a glimpse of that and everything changes. Right. No, I, I agree. It's, it's And so I also own like 19 homeless shelters. So I work with people all the time and try to help them get out of this. So like, how do you help them to disconnect from the memories and the boundaries that they created? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, you get know. it. I would say I, I'm going to send you the podcast. I'm going to also send you last week's episode. We're like 41 episodes of the podcast. And I think if you listen to that, you'll begin to get an understanding of what we're speaking about and what we're pointing to. It's literally in the listening that things will change for people. We're so caught up in doing, we've forgotten about being. And there's something in yeah. hearing this understanding that really begins to shift people out of this stuckness, out of this mind that they're believing away from this habitual old shitty thinking into something new. And, you know, it's the most powerful thing I've ever found to do that. Amazing as well that you run these homeless shelters, by the way, like oh, what a thanks. great thing to do. Thank you for doing that for the world. And yeah, because we've explained it over 40 episodes, it's quite hard to yeah. get into your question into one thing, but there isn't a way. There's just a hearing something a little bit differently by listening. Right. When we shut it all down and get into that state of, again, not accessing our memories to believe that that's who I am, then we experience the nothingness of who we really are, which is experiencing kind of like everything all at once. And and then that helps us to break free from the boundaries that we created that we identify as I, like I, like most people identify as I am this body, I am this mind, I am this being. And really you're way more. Than yeah. And where people get caught as well is there's something to do to get to the I am. What we're saying is yeah. that the I am is who you are underneath thought. And we use thought as if you were gonna, oh, I hate using the word tall, if you're going to say anything about the principles, it would be looking as thought as the vehicle to uncover your being. Right, right, right. No, I, I kind of get it. I, so I, right, that's cool. And I, I'm I'm looking forward to getting that stuff, like, you know, from you. Thank you. And um, see, it's amazing what you do with the homeless shelters as well. And it sounds as if you were trying to find something that they could listen to or to improve their lives. So maybe me and Moles can have a chat about doing an episode specifically for that but just being in the conversation and we'll send some episodes over to you but thank you so so much for coming up and i'm gonna to have thank to you. press you on because we've got josh here as well oh, good. and we are a little bit over time but thank you so much for coming up and we will send some things over yeah, thank to you. you and look forward to connecting dm me in case i can't find you afterwards please thank sure you can. darling thank you and hi josh lovely to have you with hi, us again josh. Hey ladies, um, I'm getting through, surviving, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, every single time, literally every single time that I'm like, oh, I need to tune in 
when I tune in, what you're talking about, like, there's always a moment of synchronicity. Just when I tune in, it's always like exactly what I needed to hear in that moment. And it just, I don't know. I, I appreciate <laughs> what y'all do so much. Antsy kind of touched on something that was brought to mind. So being a long-term chronic patient for a long time, I... Once we get an answer, once a patient gets an answer, like, yes, okay, you know, I, I have something to work with. I have a point that I can stand on and I can move forward. I think the biggest problem is we, you know, once one question is answered, you have 10 more questions that pop up. So in part of why people get so lost in themselves is, you know, that they have an answer now they have so many questions and they don't you know there's no solution um you know and i i know for at least the medical system in america it's uh it's almost like it's enabling us to be patients you know there's certain structures and societies and things in life that kind of influence us to go along with that mentality of not stopping being present in the moment so that what i was kind of thinking of or a, a question that came to mind was also kind of what ANSI was touching on, how can these, how can the three principles and self-actualization and individuation that comes from the three principles, how can that be given to the masses as a useful tool? Because that, you know, it's medicine is going to undergo a huge transition and it's going to move back to connecting with the self, connecting with the soul, you know, that's Medicine is not generalized. Medicine is and always should have been, you know, individualized. And we're going to move to that point. In the next 10, 20 years, it's going to be very, very, very individualized. But right now is the transition. So how can the three principles be used on a larger scale to help, you know, usher in a better transition of mental health? Great question. I just want to point back to one of the things that you said, which was the everything's perpetuated to kind of consolidate in some way the diagnosis and then the mind gets the answer and then it has more questions what we're looking at when we look in that direction is the compounding of the outside in illusion the lie that it's outside of us that what we need to be happy is outside of us and that we need to do something to be happy you know the world's set up for us to believe that it's a complete lie and what we're coming to they're, they're positive feedback loops that are yeah. just well, making that fire off more yeah. and more. It's like we go further and further and further and further into the illusion and we get more and more and more lost. So this is about we come home to something, we go inward, and everything that we thought we needed from the world is already within us. So that's one point I want to make. How we get it to the world, well, we think a great start, and hopefully it's not only us, you know, is our mind in. This is part of why we started this. We have a vision of sharing this with as many people as possible. Now, there are other great practitioners that are doing that, of course. There are other podcasts that are doing that. I know that it has been around for a little while. I know it's been in some prisons and it's made some changes there. I know that there's a program that gets it into some schools in the UK, but it's so hard because you're fighting against the system that is telling you the opposite of what we're teaching, that's telling you that what you are looking for is outside of you and everything that you need to be happy is outside of you. And keeping people on this wild goose chase, this carrot and a stick that they're never going to get to. But if you look at what that does, that perpetuates the medical model. It perpetuates the old psychology model. It perpetuates the material world because we buy things, we're addicted to things, we do everything that we can to self-medicate to get to that happiness that we already are. So we're fighting a battle here, but we know that this truth that we've uncovered, that we've found, that we've seen for ourselves and that we share has the absolute potential to change how people see themselves, how they understand themselves and how they see the world. And we seem to be at a point where it's really got into crisis mode. We've also in a world where everybody is taking everything so personally and we're up against that by saying that it isn't personal and you have everything you need within you to be okay. So for anyone listening, you know, your part in this is sharing it. 
it's sharing the unwinding project or anything else that you find around this understanding that you think wow the world needs to hear that if each one of you shares with two people and they share with two people the exponential growth of that is huge that's what we're talking about but we also have to remember that people aren't going to hear it until they're ready we can't force this down people's throats it's like when they're ready to listen they will hear and we lead by example we live from this understanding I just wanted to say part of the reason why I asked the question is uh, I actually switched my major recently from kinesiology to public health. And, you know, there's so many amazing people, practitioners, and people that are providing just information, insight, knowledge, support, and help, you know, like you two. But you touched on it. The systems are broken, essentially, these old systems that we keep relying on. So really... I 100% plan on affecting policy and changing policy. I mean, we need that fundamental policy in you know, language. We can't get to everyone. We can't get the Unminding Project to everyone immediately. But with the language that we use, with how we think, with how we, you know, language is a tool that we use to understand the world. Use better tools. And that's, I don't know, I just, I guess I had this realization, like if we use these better tools that, you know, we're learning from listening and self-exploration, you know, that in a way, I guess, could be kind of spreading or potentiating, maybe not directly the Unminding Project, but all the fundamental ideas and stuff. So that's, uh, it's going to take everyone putting in work to, to really make that best transition. You know, it takes a village, you know, it's back to the old saying, that's why we say everyone's on team unminding this isn't just a lovely conversation it's really important to share with the world and thank you for coming up and i really hope you do get to the point where you can change policy and make a difference and it's interesting i was thinking earlier about well we've got this podcast and it's like what's next how can we share it more how can we touch more people and i'm just thinking there has to be a way of kind of expanding this now i don't know what it is but it was a question that i asked today the fun is just beginning yeah thank you i really appreciate you coming up josh thank you Jem, have you got anything to say on that i do thank you josh the point that josh made about how effective this is and if we only look at the last few years with what's happened and how people have changed their whole lives you know the pandemic has really affected people and that has been through fear. That has been through watching the news, just listening to what's going on outside. But that shows the power of what is going on here. So all we need to do is switch up the frequency. We don't listen to the fear-based things. We listen to things like this. And it's just reversing the process, just sort of re-brainwashing ourselves. That's what I found has helped is just being around the conversation all the time. But the effectiveness is huge because... The proof is in the pudding of how much has changed over the last few years. If it can go that way that quickly, I'm damn well sure that it can go the opposite direction. And like we say, we are all one. Then it starts with us. It really does start with us. Obviously, we have to share with others. But raising our vibration and knowing who we are, that's where it starts. So thank you for coming up, Josh. And thank you for always supporting us and the lovely conversations that we've had. Really appreciate it. I appreciate you ladies so very much for what you do. And just, I, yes, I, I appreciate you. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's always lovely to hear, isn't it, Gems? It is. And at the beginning, you said the synchronicities and me and Moles love hearted at exactly the same time. Like you <laughs> couldn't write it. So I saw that. I think tonight, yeah, tonight has been so, so wonderful. Thank you to everyone for the questions. Just thank you for being here. Thank you to all of our listeners. I was going to say we couldn't do it without you, but we would be doing it without you because we know how important this message is. Thank you to our sponsors, Vemp. You can visit them at vemp.xyz. And we very much look forward to seeing you next week. Yeah, thank you, everyone. I'm playing the game at the moment. To my gang, Team H, I love you all very much. Just wanted to give you a shout out and a shout out to all our cult family as well. Please share the podcast. Please, if you're not subscribed to the podcast, please go online and find it and subscribe to it. It's on all the channels. And thank you so much for being a part of the Unminding family. We really appreciate you.